Hey friend, welcome to my channel. My name is Jordan if you're new here and I'm a stay-at-home mama of three boys who are five and under. On this channel, I like to share day in the life content as well as homemaking, homeschooling, and faith encouragement. So if any of that interests you, I hope you'll stick around. Today, I wanted to read a letter I wrote for you called Dear Homemaker. You might have to bear with me because I am losing my voice, but I'm gonna do the best I can. Dear Homemaker, this is to the mama who is hating homemaking and needing some encouragement or to the mama who is just needing some inspiration to keep going. The goal of this video is to show the beauty in homemaking because we all need a good little reminder sometimes that it truly is a blessing from God. Sometimes it can feel difficult to value this role in a culture that places more value upon career. I want to be a voice to re-inspire that desire for taking care of our homes. I want to be a voice that reminds you of why you do those dishes for the millionth time or change that third diaper of the day before 10 a.m. The truth is, when I became a homemaker, I didn't want to be. I wanted a career, and I'm embarrassed to say this now, but I once saw having children as a side thing to having a career first. I would never say that at the time, and I thought my priority was the home life, but the truth is that I really wanted to be respected and valued by the world with a career. But our value doesn't come from the world, a career, or even homemaking. It comes from Jesus. What we think of him and what he thinks of us is the most important part about us. My channel is called The Well-Watered Home because I believe in the value of caring for the home life. To me, a well-watered home is a home that is prayed for and prayed through. It's a home that, as I once heard someone say, clean enough to be healthy and dirty enough to be happy. I don't believe in a perfectly kept home or perfectly cooked meals with perfectly behaved children. I dream of a home that has peace, one that when people walk into, they feel like they can take a deep breath and be themselves in. I dream of a home that creates the space for adventure and possibility, cuddles and bedtime stories, Meals that are made with love and care, even if they are just rice and overcooked chicken because I didn't hear the timer for the last five minutes. I dream of a dining tablecloth that still has paint stains from the morning craft with my two-year-old. I dream of thrifting, decorating, trimming flowers and greenery that I carefully picked out. I have dreams of inspiring other mothers to come to love this role of homemaking just as much as I do. The truth is homemaking is so much more than the beautiful home with a sourdough expert. Nothing against sourdough, it's just very on trend right now. <laughs> the truth is homemaking is about the heart behind the role. It's about the mother who sat this morning pouring out her tears in prayer asking for her savior to give her the strength to walk through the day ahead. It's about the mother who started her day rolling out of bed when her child came in with a full diaper at 5 a.m. asking for breakfast. It's about the mothers who feel like they have nothing left to give, but still show up. Or the mothers that Jesus is carrying as they endure the weight of depression. The mother who struggles just to get up in the morning. The truth is, I've been all of these things. The homemaker you see today, homeschooling her boys, cooking, cleaning, playing outside with her kids, she's a product of God's grace. She once battled just trying to get up and brush her teeth. She sat many times on the ground next to the island in her kitchen, sobbing, crying, not knowing if she would ever be able to escape the thoughts of, a, of depression. Jesus is truly the reason behind homemaking. He's the only way that homemaking will ever truly work. If you're feeling like you're tired and weary of this job, I encourage you to seek him out today. His grace is sufficient, friend, and you will make it through this, whatever this is that you're walking through. Over the last month or so, my family has taken a break from screens. It hasn't been perfect, but for the most part, my children have watched significantly less TV. They've had less tablet time, and my husband and I have been trying to be intentional about not being on our phones if the kids are awake, unless if it's necessary. This first began as a little experiment just to kind of see what would happen, kind of like a fast, but the deeper we dove into the experiment, the more my curiosity grew into what if this was my life? Because 
As I let go of the screens, the more I noticed the things that I had been missing. We learned as a family that we had an entire population of ladybugs right in our backyard that we never knew about. My two-year-old and my five-year-old are now experts at finding them and placing them gently on their fingers. I've now noticed one of my favorite things to do is to sit outside with my kids. And I've noticed that I've been looking into my children's eyes more. But even beyond all the little details of our day that are different, I've noticed that I have more joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. Obviously, I'm not saying that letting go of screens makes our lives perfect, but I am saying that it makes our lives feel more gentle. I feel less hurried, less anxious, and in those moments that I normally would have reached for my phone out of boredom in the silence, I listen. I listen for his voice, waiting to hear on what's on his heart, even if it is just quiet that I hear. I can be still and know that he is God. I will forever be thankful for the blessings and beauty that have come from separating ourselves from our old habits. The truth is, my family is actually in a pretty big season of waiting, and we have been for a while. Some days our minds feel restless, running through all of the possibilities of the future in our heads. In seasons like this, it's more tempting to reach for something that will just numb or distract just to pass the time. But reaching for the Lord in those moments instead has been so much more fulfilling to my soul than any amount of time I could spend on TikTok or Facebook or Instagram. And don't get me wrong, I'm not against social media. I'm just against the impulsive desire or need to fill a void that can only be filled by a word from God. Something else I've noticed is my perspective of his character is so different than I thought. Because I've spent more time with him, we've gotten to know each other better, and what I've realized is that his character is so much kinder, more compassionate, and more loving. I've always known that God is good, and he's kind, but the more time that I've spent seeking him in those little parts of my day, it's as though the little moments that seem so insignificant have added up to something that I couldn't have ever imagined. Dear friend, homemaker, and mother, if you're battling it day in and day out, feeling like you're drowning and only surviving overwhelmed and frustrated, first of all, I've been there. Of course, Jesus is always the answer, but can I give you a practical tool that is not a formula that will fix everything, but a step to take to move towards the goals of a different way? Can I nudge you towards trying to leave your phone in your bedroom or in a cabinet, or in your closet, wherever you won't see it? Can I nudge you to let go of the screens just for a little while, just enough time to begin to see the beauty of life without it? Aren't you a little bit curious? Don't forget to have grace for yourself. There are days that we use screens. The other day we were sitting in traffic and the kids were crying for hours in the car and we came home and let them watch a movie. Don't get me wrong, friend. There is a time and a place. But I highly encourage you to lean into that still small voice. I encourage you to spend those two minutes listening to him as you sit down and eat a snack or sit on the couch at the end of your day or stand in line at a checkout. I've begun to pick up magazines and buy them and actually read them. I've noticed I'm learning more about myself and what I love, things I've been wanting to learn about, skills I want to develop, people I really want to spend time with. I've learned about my children and what they like and don't, things they're gifted in, and so on and so forth. Anyways, I could go on and on, but I'll leave you with this. If you were to envision your life a year from now, or even a month from now, what would it look like? Ephesians 3.16 says, I pray according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click that like and subscribe button, and hopefully I will see you on the next one.